welcome back to my channel for those who are new my name is melissa marie aka student nurse mel i post lifestyle financing and nursing videos so if you're interested in any content like that go ahead and hit that subscribe button join the tribe and stay tuned for the rest of the video you guys have been quite busy i will say shout out to all my new subscribers all my new instagram followers thank you so much for all of the dms and comments and stuff that i've been getting but i have been getting a lot of questions about the specific nursing process at chamberlain and um basically financing it and the professors and all this kind of stuff so i figured i would compile all of this into a faq video where i can answer your questions and um hopefully help some of you guys out i do want to apologize for my appearance my spirits have been kind of down today with all that has been going on in Minneapolis and all that kind of stuff. But this video is not about that, but it has been affecting me emotionally. But Floyd, I just want to say his name because he deserves it. His family deserves it. His, his baby girl, remember him. He was a person and he mattered. How long did my acceptance take? From the date that Chamberlain declared my application to be finished, until I received my acceptance was nine calendar days. And it's very important to note that I'm specific about the date that Chamberlain said that my application was complete because I actually completed my application February 10th, but for them and their system, it says March 17th or March 19th or so. So it took them a month to recognize that my application was complete actually. I actually had to stay on their case a little bit just to make sure that my stuff was processed promptly. But once it was, it was nine days later that I heard back. What method did they use to notify me? So I received an email with a DocuSign for enrollment into the program. I also received a phone call from my admissions advisor. And I also got a letter in the mail, a hard copy letter in a cute little envelope that stated that I was academically eligible. What was my prerequisite GPA? So if you've watched my previous videos, you know that Chamberlain does not have prereqs for its program. So I don't have a prerequisite GPA, but I will say that all of my classes that transfer in, I got A's and B's in them. How long did I prepare for the HESI to get the score that I got? Again, if you watched my previous video, you know that I scored pretty well on the HESI. I got an 89 point something percent one thing to note is that chamberlain actually does not count the math section very high they also scale up their score compared to what the computer says so the computer hesi system will give you a score for me it was 88 point something and then with chamberlain's the way that they factor in their scores it ended up being 89 point something how many credits did i transfer in i transferred in 47 credits and like I said, I had to be in constant communication with my admissions advisor and the registrar's office because um, initially when I received my academic eligibility, it gave me a report of the classes that they thought would transfer in from my previous degrees. And the number was something like 30 credits. But because I knew that I was unwilling to repeat a lot of the classes that I've taken before in the past, I basically told my admissions advisor this class would qualify for this this class would qualify for this and i would give them lists i would present them the previous syllabi from my previous institution i got some more credits transferred in so at this point i am at 47 credits on my transfer transcript but i am pending eight more credits like i said just make sure you stay firm on the registrar if they are holding on to some classes that you know that you have taken, that is a lot of money you could be saving by not having to pay to retake a class. So just make sure you monitor everything and know your, your history, your academic files and all that good stuff. How am I paying for Chamberlain? I'm paying for Chamberlain through a mixture of federal student aid, private loans, and cash. How did I know if I qualified for federal aid or scholarship? With federal aid, the best way that you can find out if you qualify or what you have left is by going to FAFSA's website. It's a free, in fact, I believe the F stands for free, free application for federal student aid. 
you go to the website, you fill it out, it doesn't cost you anything. You get a student report that basically states how much they expect you to be able to put up for school based on your income, based on your household. In that SAR, you get an EFC, which is your expected family contribution. This question's a little personal, y'all, but I was asked what was my credit score to be able to qualify for my private loans. My credit score is currently, and has been for a while, between 700 and 760. So it's in that range. It's in the good range, I believe. Actually, I think above 720 is excellent, but it's above 700, right? I used Sally Mae for my loan servicing, my, for my private loans. This is not sponsored. I'm not endorsing Sally Mae. They're just like every other company in my opinion, but it works for me. No, I did not need a cosigner and my rate is okay. I forget the exact percentage, but it varies based on your credit score. So you could have a much higher interest rate or a much lower interest rate. It could be variable fixed, which is something that you choose. So all of these factors are dependent on your specific um, loan application. Okay, this question says, once you're a student and your tuition is charged to your account, if you have a balance on your account, what is the payment schedule like slash when are payments due? Okay, so this depends entirely on how you plan to finance your education, right? So if you have private loans or student loans or any kind of aid that is coming from a third party, then you have some leeway and when your account needs to be zeroed out. So with the loan situation or with the student aid situation, you have until week five for it to post and clear up your account. Remember that each session is only eight weeks. So to have five weeks to clear it up is pretty generous in my opinion. And in the meantime, while it's processing for disbursement, you don't have to worry about your account having a negative balance or saying that you owe anything because you don't. The government does. Now, if you were to enroll, say, in a payment plan, then in that instance, you would have to do a down payment first before your classes begin. And then you would do two more payments, one on the fifth week and one on the eighth week. Otherwise, if you are paying completely out of pocket and you are a cash paying student, then you need to have your entire session paid off by the first day of that session. So if you began in May, like me for example, the first day of the session was May 4th. If you had a schedule like I did, and where I only have physical class on Fridays, then you would think that you would just have to pay before class? No, Monday when that session starts. Even though your class is all the way on Friday, you have to do it at the beginning. I hope that was clear. It's a little bit confusing. If you need more details on the cost of Chamberlain and exactly how you need to begin to budget for it, then you can go ahead and click the video that I'm going to link right here, which is my cost video. How much money can I borrow and apply to my tuition? How much will I need out of pocket? Okay, again, filling out your FAFSA is probably your best first step. Even if you've been to school before, like I have, or you've graduated before from college, you never know what might be available to you to apply to this program if you are very interested in this program. With me, I thought that I had reached my aggregate loan maximums, but, but apparently now in this stage of my life, applying for FAFSA, I'm considered an independent student and before I was considered a dependent student. So as an independent student, you are allowed to have more funds allotted to you. How are the professors and staff so far? So far, um, so far I would say the professional community seems okay. They seem, they seem pretty nice. I've not encountered any people who needed me to redirect how they were talking to me or anything like that. I genuinely feel like the leadership and the professors want to see their students succeed. One of my favorite things is that I feel like the professors are genuinely passionate about their jobs. They're passionate about the subjects they're teaching and that's super important for me as someone who in general, I I'm not a school person. I don't really love school, you know? I know that can be weird as someone who is planning to go to extra school after this to become an advanced practice registered nurse, but school is not really 
um, something that gets my juices flowing, if you know what I mean. I enjoy learning new things, yes, but I need to have that motivation from someone who is passionate as well. Like, passionate energy will rub off on me very quickly and get me excited and fired up about something. I will say that one of my professors has been going above and beyond and out of her way to make sure that she's accessible to us at all times with this whole corona web-based learning situation. She's very explicit and clear about what we what she, what she expects of us and all that kind of stuff. Another one of my professors is honestly doing the most right now. I have had to send several strongly worded emails, but I will talk about her a little bit later. I will talk about that class when I get to my end of session recap. We're currently in week four, so we're halfway done already. Time is flying. But when I get to my end of session recap, I will definitely divulge everything about that class and what you need to know and what to expect and what to look out for and all of that stuff. Are my classes diverse? Well, this one is a little bit hard to answer because I have not been able to be physically in class, but on the WebEx webcam system and in Canvas, I can say yes, the classes have seemed very diverse so far. We have all gendered students, we have all races, all age groups, um, locations across the country. In my general education class, I have students who are at the Nevada program, I have Ohio students, uh, Jersey students, like I have, there's multiple campuses, so all of the students can take all the gen eds from any campus. And from my Atlanta class, yeah, the people are very diverse based on the images I see. But again, I've not been on campus to meet these people, but so far from talking to them and all that kind of stuff. I do think that there will be a really good sense of community once we're on campus, just based on how we've been communicating so far. We have a group meet in my intro to nursing class. We talk in it all the time. We kind of share ideas, share grievances, all that kind of stuff. And I feel like the professors definitely stress relying on each other and you know, the next two or three years that you're in this program, these people are your family. They're going to have to support you emotionally and um, academically. You know, you guys are going through the same thing and you guys are the only ones who are going to understand each other in terms of what you're going through. So, yeah. And that's all I have for my frequently asked questions for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've gotten to this point in the video, make sure you comment down below halfway there because we are halfway there through the end of this session and I'm excited to get closer to my clinical classes. Again, thank you guys for watching my video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and let me know anything else you would like to see from me in terms of content about Chamberlain or any other questions you might have in general. I will be posting part two of this video tomorrow which will tackle time management and then part three will tackle relationships, personal life, nursing school, and all that kind of stuff. Don't forget to subscribe. See you in my next video. Look at more.